All right, so this one we're going to look for uh, error bounds using Simpson's rule. Uh, for Simpson's rule, so suppose that the fourth derivative of f of x is less than or equal to k, where x is between a and b. If e sub s is the error involved in using Simpson's rule, then the error the e sub s is less than or the absolute value e sub s is less than or equal to k times b minus a to the fifth over 180 times n to the fourth. So what we're going to use this uh, use this to do is we're going to figure we're going to solve for n. They're going to we're going to have problems where it says okay we want the error to be within this number say like 0 0.0001 okay well what does n need to be that's the examples that we're going to work uh, I've got three different examples each example is going to have its own video so go ahead and check those check them all out because they'll each be different functions and uh, different ways to find k k's k can be the toughest thing to find Okay, so check them out. All right, so let's take a look at example one. It says, how large should we take n in order to guarantee that Simpson's rule approximation for the integral 1 over x dx from 1 to 2 is accurate to within 0 0.0001? All right, so remember for Simpson's rule. Remember this is less than or equal to k times b minus a to the fifth over 180 n to the fourth. And the fourth derivative of f of x is less than or equal to k. Alright, so to find n well, we need to know what a and b are, which we know that. That's the limits on our integral. And then we would need to know what k is. So that's the problem uh, in some of these uh, problems you have that you have to work. Sometimes k can be tough to find. All right. This one, this one's not going to be so bad, but some of the other ones that we're going to work, Check those out because uh, K is a little more difficult. It's different how we go about finding it. So, you know, that's why I'm doing all these different examples. Uh, so, well, let's get busy finding K. So, we need the fourth derivative. So, I've got F of X is equal to 1 over X. All right. So, I've got to find the fourth derivative of this. Well, Let's go ahead and write this as x to the negative 1. It's easier to take the derivative like this. So I've got f prime of x is equal to negative x to the negative 2. The negative 1 comes down, subtract 1. All right, f double prime of x. Well, the negative 2 comes down, that's positive 2x, subtract 1. f triple prime, the third derivative, that's going to be what? Negative 6x to the negative 4. And then the fourth derivative, that's going to be 24x to the negative 5, which is 24 over x to the fifth. All right, so we've got the, we've got the fourth derivative. All right, now we can use this to figure out what we need k to be. Okay, we want to say, okay, this, the absolute value of this is going to be less than or equal to some number for all the x values that are what? Between 1 and 2. Okay, so we've got the fourth derivative of x is equal to the absolute value. 24 over x to the fifth. All right, and and really on this problem, I wouldn't need to put the absolute value because we're between one and two. It's going to always be positive. All right, 
So I can say that this is less than or equal to, okay, so I'm gonna write it down 24. Now let me explain it. So how did I know that this is less than or equal to 24? Well, remember our x values are from one to two. So as I go from one to two, the x values are doing what? They're getting larger and larger. So what does that tell us? Well, as the x values are getting larger and larger, the denominator's getting larger and larger. So that means the whole fraction's getting smaller and smaller, okay? So this right here, this 24 over x to the fifth, is the largest when x is equal to one. Okay, so 24 over one to the fifth, well, that's 24. All right, so this will never be larger than 24 for x values between one and two. So we can say that this is less than or equal to 24. And so that tells us that k is equal to 24. All right, so the, the, the thing you've got to think about, yeah, this one, we got a, we got a pretty, we got an accurate value for k. On some of them, you may not get that accurate. Some of them, you're going to get something close. And uh, watch some of the other videos. Uh, I think it's the on the trapezoidal rule, maybe, where I do the integral where this is cosine x squared. Check that one out. Okay, uh, that's a that's a good example of figuring out what k is and just wanting to get you know and getting something close. All right, so let's look at this. So now we've got k. We know a and we know b. So we're going to put everything into here. Okay, so that is going to give me 24 times b minus a to the fifth over 180 n to the fourth. All right, so I plug the k, the b, and the a in, and I'm looking for n. Well, what do I want? I want this to be less than or equal to what? 0. 0. 0.0001. Okay, so that's got to be less than 0. 0.0001. And now we just solve for n. So the end of the fourth will come up here. The point zero 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 one will come down here, so that's going to be twenty four over because two minus one is one, one to the fifth is one, and that's one eighty times point zero 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 one, less than or equal to n to the fourth, and so now I would do what? Take the fourth root of both sides. That's twenty four over one eighty times point zero 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 one less than or equal to n, and so I get n is greater than or equal to 6.04, okay? And so now I can figure out what n is. Well, I would need n to be what? Well, you might think 7, but no. n is going to equal 8, because if you remember in Simpson's rule, n must be even, okay? So don't forget that about Simpson's rule. It has, N has to be even. All right, so I hope this helped. Check out the other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.